Hey, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to go over my dump valves here and a common problem that happens on pretty much any RV. And now I want to state right away my dump valves, my dump system is completely different than uh, the normal OEM Winnebago and pretty much a little bit different than most of the RVs out there. But uh, that's a whole different mod. But let me go over here. This is I'm going to replicate your your sewer outlet. Normally on the, on the Winnebago view and the Navion, that sewer outlet would be sitting in right about this position here. I don't have one anymore. I took out my system out completely. But a common item that happens, and this is uh, whether you own a Winnebago or any other RV in a, uh, any length of time, sometime or another, a common item that happens is when you take this cap off, you get that, uh, I call it the dump of shame or shower of sadness, is the leftover waste that's inside this pipe gushes out and you're not prepared for it. Well, there, uh, there's a couple of different causes, but you know, one of the main ones is that these dump valves here, they're not holding and they're leaking through and filling the pipe itself. There's a sec section of pipe on the other side of the sewer outlet that goes before the tanks. And these dump valves is what stops that waste from coming out this outlet. So there's uh, two types of dump valves here. I call this, this is the direct uh, dump valve, as in when you pull the handle, it's connected directly to the dump outlet. So when you pull it, you can see the whole valve is moving on you. Now this is not the type I have in my Winnebago. The other common type is, we call it a remote dump valve. Now this is for a, a gray tank, but in this dump valve, same concept here, but there is no handle. But same concept, but in here, there is an actual remote cable. It's cable, -dri cable driven, and that cable routes to a remote location where the handle is. And I'll show you, that's basically what I have here. If you look inside here, I have handles back here. I have the black and the gray back here. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, video, my whole wet bay is completely different than what the typical Winnebago uh, wet bay is. I've basically removed everything that's in here. Normally, in your uh, case, you would have that white panel here and your dump valves will be way out here. But there's a giant void spot in the back and there's a divider panel that's usually here. I've ripped all that out to make more room for my uh, macerator system. So this is actually a macerator system. But these dump valves here are the handles. They are actually not connected to the stump valve. It's basically a long cable and the handle is way over in a different location. And I'll show you what that is like uh, underneath. But uh, before we go any further, let me go on the bench and show you how these uh, dump valves work and then we'll come back here and look underneath and uh, we'll go over how you can fix this. Okay, now that I have it on the bench, let me show you or let me explain to you a little bit better what's going on. So this is replicating your dump sewer or your sewer outlet on the outside. So when you remove the cap, and you know, sometimes I think this has happened to pretty much every RVer at one point or another. And you take this cap off, you get that surprise dump of shame or a shower of sadness, whichever one you want to call it. And what's happening is when you take this cap off, I'll call it inside the sewer outlet. You know, obviously there's a pipe before it gets to the tank. So if your valves are leaking, that pipe is filling up with all that liquid that's leaking out of your tanks and let's look at it uh, closely so we have the uh, two different types of uh, dump valves here you have the uh, direct dump valve like I mentioned here so if this dump valve doesn't go in all the way if it's just out just a little bit that liquid is going to slowly seep out of there and fill those fill that pipe does that make sense and then same thing with this uh, remote dump valve. I didn't uh, explain outside, but right here is, there's a little Allen screw. It's basically a set screw. 
And in the end here, you see where this hole is, that's where that uh, cable goes in. The cable will go in here, and then the set screw will tighten it and keep that cable in place. So if you look at this, you won't be able to see, normally in a, a remote dump valve setting, you won't see this entire contraption. You'll only see a small portion of the cylinder, but inside the housing, this is what it looks like. You see how that cylinder's in all the way to the plastic? So if there's a little bit of a gap here, you see that? That means that follows along with, I don't know if you can see it following along with this. So if there's a little bit of gap, that means there's a little bit of gap here. And there's and that liquid is going to slowly seep out and fill that pipe. So you need to make sure that this cylinder is in all the way. So any RV, regardless of which one you have, the dump valve has to go in all the way. And a common problem, especially on the black tanks, is when uh, if you don't dump properly, I would suggest, I think there's uh, plenty of articles out there, when you dump your black tank, especially your black tank, you want to have it, get it, fill it, fill it up. It doesn't have to be all the way, but I would say more than two-thirds. That way, the more liquid that's in there, you'll get that gravity, that gushing effect, and you'll have less tendency to have all those solids or toilet paper. So a common item that will happen is if you get a sticky dump valve where it doesn't go in all the way, sometimes there's a buildup of toilet paper that will go inside this, inside this, I'll call it the crack here, and so this dump valve will get stuck on that. I, I've never actually had that problem because my dump uh, uh, practice is even if I have my uh, tank, a quarter tank full, if I need to dump or want to dump because I plan on uh, a long dry camping uh, session is right before I dump, I fill it up with water. I fill that tank up as much as, I won't say as much as I can, but minimum of at least two thirds. So I have a lot of water uh, compared to the solids. That way, when you pull this valve, you get that gravity effect. And of course, it's, I don't think I need to really explain anymore, but I think you get the concept. So that's really it. Now let's go, uh, I'm gonna show you underneath my RV and let's show you how these dump valves actually work and what the common problem is on that seepage. It's, it's on a shortcut wise, it's because this cylinder is not going in all the way. And I'll show you a couple of causes, uh, how, how that happens and how you can fix it. I did forget to mention now these uh, dump valves. You know, this is for demonstration purposes. Normally there would be a gasket here on both sides and it would be encased in a housing or, you know, the pipes themselves. So you actually couldn't see all this. This would all be buried inside of a pipe, same as this one here. And that's why, like I mentioned, is that this cylinder, you won't be able to see the whole thing. It's usually encased in a housing. And we'll go down below the uh, RV and I'll show you what it's like. But now you get a concept of how the position of that dump valve needs to be for it to be closed all the way. Okay, we're uh, underneath the RV right now. And let me get your bearings straight. Now this is, I have the uh, 24D floor plan. So over here, the point, direction I'm pointing that is my gray tank over there and my dump valve for the uh, gray tank. And then right here, this is my dump valve for my black tank. And my black tank is right here. It's actually facing the back bumper. On the 24J floor plan, those tanks are going to be reversed. I can't speak for the uh, 24V floor plan. But um, let me share a story with you. I didn't mention it at the beginning of the video but that uh, dump of shame. I did mention it will eventually happen to everyone out there at one time or another. I will, I won't say happily admit, but I'll admit that actually happened to me on this RV on my very first dump. And I discovered that these valves were actually not installed correctly and that's what caused it. Wasn't very happy about it, and that's how I actually went right away into this full mass raider. I went into a bigger, bigger modification after, but uh, that dump of shame, I think it will happen to everyone at one point or another. Doesn't matter if you're very experienced or not. Now, if you're at the very beginning and this hasn't happened to you, you could, 
I would work on making sure it doesn't uh, doesn't happen to you. So there's some preventative measures you can do so it doesn't happen. But let's uh, work on this. What is causing this, and what you can do? Now, before I uh, jump into it right away, there's a lot of things I have changed down here. All my waste pipes are different, so you can't use that as reference. But one of the main things that I did, and what others should probably do too, is you need to do wire management. Now how those remote dump valves work is, let me get your bearings straight. On the other side of this, that's where the actual handle is. This is my gray and the top one is black. So when you pull the handle, you see this black cable here. It's just like a bicycle cable. This is the outside portion and there's an inner portion here. You can probably see it better here. The silver piece right here, that's the inner portion here. Just like a bicycle cable, this cable would move with that handle but the outside cable is stationary. I hope that makes sense, but looking at this remote cable, you see how short of a length this is. Now this goes directly to my gray tank. That's not how it was uh, uh, originally from the factory. My, uh, I'll call it the wire management, was pretty poorly done, and that's not a Winnebago thing. That's pretty much every manufacturer out there. If you follow the manufacturer of the cable system, you're supposed to have gradual curves, unnecessary bends. You don't you don't want to do unnecessary bends. So I cut all my cables to proper length, recut them all, and routed them and zip tied them in place where the outside cable is stationary. And that same thing goes for my black. My black cable goes up here and loops gently around this bar and back down to here. Hard to see in this lighting, but it's routed uh, gently. And on top of it, of course, I cut off all the excess slack. So now you kind of get a, a idea of what you need to do. And then of course I zip tied it all along the point. So the cable is, the outside cable needs to be stationary so the inner cable can travel in and out, not move the entire cable. Again, just like a, a bicycle. So let me give you a point of what's happening uh, normally and causing a problem on your leaks. So let's look at this black tank valve here. So when you pull on that handle on the inside, this silver cable here is supposed to go in and out. And I don't know if the camera can pick this up very well. Yeah, kind of. So you see that, and it connects to the cylinder, and you should be able to see now, when I push the cylinder in, you see that? So the common problem when uh, the installers install this is this section of cable, this clear section of cable, a lot of times they cut that to the wrong length. And when they do, especially if they cut it too short, what's happening is, remember I told you that cylinder, you can't see the whole thing because it's encased in this housing, is this cylinder is not going in all the way. You see that little bit of travel right there? So when you push in, then in that handle on the inside, if things aren't set up correctly, this silver cable is not being able to be pushed in far enough to push the cylinder in. So if it's out slightly like this, just a little bit, then this tank is seeping out and filling your pipes. And when you go and open up that uh, dump valve, or the, uh, we'll call it the dump cover on the outside, that's where you get the uh, shower of sadness. So, Getting the correct length, now it takes a little bit of work. This is very intricate, but not overly complex. Bottom line is when you're all done, when you push in that handle, this cylinder should not be able to travel anymore in. Does that make sense? So that's the very first thing. And what you could do if you really wanted to do is you could put a marker line here to know like a reference point that you know that cylinder is pushed in all the way. So the other part is if the cable's cut too short, even when you push on the cylinder, you may not be able to push it anymore because the cable is holding you back. Hopefully that makes sense too. Let me uh, show you a quick guidance on how you can fix this. Number one, I'm gonna take out this uh, set screw here. And let's take this off just so, oops, wrong way. So you have a point of reference here. So I loosen that set screw. You don't need to take it off all the way, you just need to loosen it. When you loosen that set screw, this inner wire can be pulled back. 
or you can pull the handle. So, right here. So this cable here, that length is very important. When I pull it back out all the way, now you can get it. Hopefully the camera can pick this up in the lighting, but this cable, this cylinder number one is pushed in all the way. Now if you put, pull a, a cylinder out and you put this cable in and tightened it, and this cable can't travel that way anymore, then you have it wrong. Does that make sense? So you can get a, a good reference wise, is now you can see when this cable is inside this hole, it passed the set screw and then I can tighten it. So if this cable is too short, let me uh, show you what you can do to fix it. So this cable, this shielding here is pinched inside this little section here. So these two screws will loosen. And this is what I had to do at the uh, very beginning was my silver portion here they cut it too they cut it too short so it went in all the way but the valve was out just a little bit so when this was pushed in all the way it couldn't push it anymore because the cable was holding it back the tank physically couldn't push in all the way so what I had to do again besides the uh, cable management was take this cable out Okay, and this whole thing is going to come out. Now look at this here. You see this outer shielding, just like a brake cable. So this outer shielding sits inside here, inside this little section here. Let me uh, put this. Alright, I don't know what happened here. Well. Because of my wire management, I'm going to have to redo this. Okay. Okay, so I had to separate this uh, zip tie here for demonstration purposes. But this wire management here, if you look at this, this shielding, this sec section of shielding here, it's very important that it covers this entire width of this little rectangular piece here. That gives it enough length to sit inside this housing so when you tighten up the screws it's pinching on this outer shielding so when the outer shielding is pinched that means it can't move and only the inner cable can travel in and out now if the inner cable is too short that's where you need to pull this section of the cable it's easier if you pull uh, pull with a handle and pull this cable beyond the shielding and cut a section of uh, shielding off then you're then pull this cable back out and this section will be longer now it's very important this section here has to be exactly the length of this to push that cylinder all the way in so it's a little bit of a trial and error and then you would put this back in here and again make sure that this shielding goes in all the way and here's a good reference check is I have it here I know it's passing the uh, set screw so before I actually tighten this portion here I will actually squeeze the shielding first because then I know the shielding cannot move and the inner cable so let's do this together so there I have it past the set screw you probably uh, can't uh, pick that up on camera very good but with that I'm going to tighten this uh, screw back these screws back down okay now my shielding is safe and I know my cylinder is pushed in all the way and again, if you want to put a point of reference, you know, a marker or something so you know, or take a measurement of uh, knowing that the cylinder is pushed in all the way, because when you do put this wire in and tighten down the set screw, it does bend the wire a little bit, which means it can pull out the cylinder slightly. So let's go ahead and do this together here. I may have to uh, bend this uh, wire to get it in this 
tool again because it's bent from that set screw. Okay, I'm gonna have to uh, bend my wire back because it's slightly uh, bent from the set screw, which is normal. And I need to bend it back so I can put this back in properly. Okay, there we go. Okay, it's pushed in all the way. I feel comfortable with this. The cylinder's in all the way. And then we'll start uh, tightening this uh, set screw. And uh, remember what I uh, mentioned to you previously. When you tighten down this uh, set screw, that inner cable is going to bend a little bit. And you need to make sure you keep it straight. And that's what I'm doing here with my other hand. So I'm tightening it and also keeping it straight. Okay. Well, I know just because of uh, memory wise, this cylinder is pushed in all the way. This set screw is tight. These screws are tight. And this call it the conduit or the bike cable is in place. Now the thing I need I do need to do is I need to reattach the zip tie the zip tie here so the wire stay uh, stationary. I have to remove that cable just for demonstration purposes. Okay. Let's cut this. Let's cut this old zip tie out of there. And then uh, one last thing, let me show you the other problem that I uh, that I mentioned before. Remember I mentioned that this cable needs to be straight. The gray tank will be a better example. Okay. Now you see my uh, gray tank dump valve here. So this wire here, if it ever gets bent or deformed, what it's going to do is it's going to pull this cylinder out slightly. So you need to make sure this stays straight. So road debris comes in and hits this and bends the wire this cylinder will never have a chance to uh, go back in all the way because the wire is slightly bent it will travel in more like an arc path and it will never be able to uh, have the correct length to make the cylinder go back in all the way so check for that as well but really that's it if the cylinder is pushed in all the way that means the valve is closed all the way and you should get no seepage. Now the gaskets can fail on those dump valves over time, but honestly, it takes a long time for something like to do that. Usually there's other uh, causes that's making that uh, that happen, whether it's you know toilet paper getting uh, jammed in that valve, or in this case, it's just because this remote cable is not installed correctly. That's uh, going to uh, wrap up the video. Uh, probably another long-winded video, but I did want to explain the full, you know, I didn't want to just say, hey, this is all you need to do. It It is intricate work. You need to make sure this is uh, installed properly because I've seen people adjust uh, these and, uh, you know, especially technicians, they've installed it, they say everything is fine and, you know, you go on, on your next trip and you'll never know until until you know. And this way, you'll know what to look for to make sure that valve is closed all the way. I hope you like uh, videos like this. Now, if you do, maybe I should do a series of videos on other common problems on the RV and how I fix them. You know, if you, if you want to see videos like that, let me know. There's probably a good couple of dozen videos I could do on common problems, especially on this uh, Winnebago that I've either fixed or planning on fixing. And that's really it. Uh, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed and made, uh, made it this far, please do subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.